Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Corner again. I am so glad to see each one of you. I know that you're very excited to hear more from God's Word. I know it's your favorite book. I hope you read it every day. And I hope as you read it, you say, Lord, speak to my heart. Tell me what you want me to do. God says that He wants us to read His Word and he wants us to obey everything it says. He wants us to become more like Jesus, and then our light will shine forth in this world, and he will receive honor and glory. Oh, that is so exciting. I'm so glad you're here. We are going to hear from our favorite person, and that is Eddie. Eddie has something that he would like to say to you today. Well, Eddie, I'm so glad that you're here today. How are you? I remember what you were talking about last time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was telling you that I have some friends. And those friends, oh, still embarrasses me. They say they don't believe Jesus was anything but a good man. Yes, they say. He was a good teacher. Yeah, he lived a good life. But, nope, nope, they don't think he was God. Oh, okay, Eddie, well, that is very sad. Do you know what? Today, we're going to find out that they are wrong. Eddie, I want to ask you a question. Do you read history? Well, of course, I have history in school, and I learn about people that lived a long time ago. And my teacher says, you remember their names. They really lived. They were here. Yes, Eddie, they were. But the only reason that we know about those people in history is because somebody wrote about them. Nobody's ever seen them. We just know it from what men have written. Well, that's true. I guess. No one's ever seen a lot of them. Well, it was a long time before they had cameras. They have no picture. I know, Eddie, but they really lived. And that's the same with Jesus. Even though people don't have any pictures of him, there were men that were there and they saw him, they saw him come alive, they saw him do things that nobody else ever could do. Well, I never thought of that. Yeah, so these men that saw Jesus, are they sure they saw him? Did they get the story right? What about those that say they were wrong? Well, Eddie, we have a story today about those men. They were honest. They had no reason to tell a lie because if they lied, they would have had a much easier life. But because they told the truth, they were persecuted and they were thrown in prison and many of them died because they knew they had seen Jesus alive. Whoa, I want to hear that story. I can hardly wait to tell my friends that there were people that saw him and they saw him alive. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I can hardly wait. Well, all right, Eddie, you just wait and you just sit there. And Eddie, 
I love the way you listen to the stories. You're quiet. You never talk. Oh, and you listen to everything. Eddie is going to go and listen to the story now. I love these stories. They're my favorite. I love the Bible. It's my favorite book. I hope it's your favorite book, too. All right. See you later. Bye. Mwah. Love being here. Bye-bye. Well, as we were talking to Eddie, how do you know that anybody lived in history? There were people that knew that person and wrote about him. And when Jesus Christ arose from the dead and proved that he was God, nobody can raise themselves from the dead except God. He said, I will do that. A lot of people didn't believe him, but he showed that he could do it. And of course, there were eyewitnesses. Now, of course, there were the soldiers, you remember. And they were there. And they didn't see Jesus, but they saw the angel come and roll the stone away. And you remember, they went to the chief priest, and the chief priest paid the money to lie. But in their hearts, they knew what had really happened. And then later that day, you remember that some women came. Well, the Bible tells us that Jesus appeared to those women the very day that he came alive. They came to the tomb. They spoke with the angels. How many of you have ever spoken with an angel? You only, I mean, angels, they are so special. God sent them down to tell them that he was not there. He was alive. He had risen from the dead. And then you remember that Jesus appeared to Mary. And she was crying. Oh, <laughs> she didn't know what had happened. She didn't know where the Lord Jesus was, but he appeared to her. And remember, he says, who are you seeking? Why are you weeping? And she says, because I don't know where the Lord is. Well, where was the Lord? Oh, he was alive. In fact, she didn't know it, but she was talking to the Lord. And so he said one word, and you remember what that one word was? It was Mary. It's me, Mary. You know, sometimes you're talking to somebody, say, honey, here I am. And right immediately, she knew it was the Lord. Well, the Lord Jesus appeared to several people the very day that he arose from the dead. And that tomb was in a garden that was very close to Jerusalem. And many people that day, they heard the story. Everybody in Jerusalem knew Jesus. He had done the miracles. They had heard his words. He was the most popular person in all of Israel at that time. And it was the feast of the Passover. They had people from all countries that were there. It was very, very crowded. And remember that he had come into the city just earlier that week and they had said, Hosanna, our king, you're our king. And then when they saw him on the cross, they were shocked. And then when they heard that he was alive, they couldn't believe it. And Mary even several times came to the tomb that day. It was very close. And they feel many others came to the tomb to see that it was empty. And it was. It was empty because Jesus was alive just like he said. He was not dead. Well, that day, the Bible tells us that there were two men that lived in a little town that was very close to Jerusalem. It was seven miles away. And those two men, they, it says they were on that very day, their way to a village called Emmaus. And it was about seven miles. Well, now it will take about two to three hours to walk the seven miles. And as they were walking and talking, they were very sad 
They said, what is this? They were talking about the things that had taken place, how, how Jesus had, had been crucified. And, and now there were people saying that he had come alive. And as they were walking and as they were talking, but very, very sad, someone came up and started traveling along that road with them. Who do you think it was? Well, the Bible tells us, now you're going to be able to see exactly who it was, but their eyes, it says their eyes were prevented from recognizing it was Jesus. And so he comes up to them and he says, what are you talking about with each other? And they were just looking so sad. And one of them said to Jesus, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem that is unaware of what's happened? Where have you been? Everybody knows about Jesus, that he was crucified, that he, he it's, it's, it's being rumored that he's come alive. Now, of course, Jesus, he knew exactly what they were talking about. And so he says, he says, are you unaware of the things that have happened these days? And Jesus says, what things? What things are you talking about? And they says, oh, the mighty things that Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed. You know, they had had some Old Testament prophets and these Old Testament prophets had done miracles and they thought they were so great because God had really done the miracles through them. But when Jesus came, he was mighty indeed. He did so many more miracles than any of them ever did. Everybody that came to him that was sick, he could heal. He could just do, he walked on water, turned water into wine. Oh, Jesus did so many wonderful things. He was mighty indeed. And he was mighty in word. You know, those people were used to going to the, the synagogue and they would heard, heard their, their, their chief priest talk about the Lord Jesus, and, or not Jesus, but talk about God. And they would listen and sometimes they wouldn't understand. But then Jesus came and he told them about heaven and about God and he spoke like one who had been there. Had he been there? Yes, he came down from heaven. He was God himself. And oh, they said, yes, oh, his words. No one's ever spoke to us and taught us about heaven the way that he has. And then they said, but our chief priests and our rulers, they delivered him to death and, and they crucified him. We can't understand why they would do that. We know they were jealous, but to crucify him? And we were hoping, oh, we were hoping that he was going to be the one to redeem Israel. You know, we're under the Romans and they're very mean to us. And we were thinking that he was going to set up his kingdom and he would be the king. And then we wouldn't have to be under the Romans anymore because, oh, the power that he had, he could have changed things if he would have wanted to. And then you know what? It says, and now it's been three days since he died. And, and this morning, these women, they amazed us. They went to the tomb early to put some spices on the body and then they didn't find his body. And they came to us saying, they had seen visions of angels. And these angels said that he was not dead, he was alive, but we saw him. We saw him dead. We saw him. We know he was in the tomb. We can't understand. And you know, some of those that were with us, they even went to the tomb and they found it just like the women had said, but, but, but they didn't see him. And so Jesus, he said, oh, you men, why does it take you so long to believe? You know what? There are people today, they grow up in the church. They hear about the Lord every Sunday. They have his 
Bible right there in their house. But they don't always believe in the Lord. They don't believe the truth. And Jesus said to them, why does it take you so long to believe? Don't you believe the prophets? And don't you remember in the Old Testament a long time ago, those men that you think are so great, they told you that Jesus would be crucified. Yes, you were waiting for the Messiah. And yes, someday the Messiah is going to rule and reign. But first, before he rules and reigns, he came to do something for you that was much more important than just to be your earthly king. He came to take the punishment for your sin so that your sin could be forgiven and you could live in heaven forever with the Lord Jesus. Oh, Yes, he said Jesus came for much greater purposes. And then he began with Moses. That was the man who wrote the first five books of the Bible. He started right at the beginning. And then he went on to the prophets. And he also quoted from David. King David wrote prophecies about the Lord. And he says, don't you remember studying? I know you do. And here it said right here in scripture, how Jesus, that Messiah would have to suffer and die. But it says his body would not see corruption. He would never, he would die but his body wouldn't be corrupted. That means he would have to come back alive again. And when they finally approached all this time, they were walking two or three hours, they were talking. And as they were talking, their heart was just burning within them. Oh yes, that's right, I remember. Oh, that's what it meant. You know, I never understood that before. Oh, I see now that that Messiah we were waiting for, yes, yes, he, he did have to die. And oh yes, yes, I understand it now. And so when they reached the town, the Bible says that Jesus acted like he was going to go on. And they said, oh, no, please, it's late. You, you can't go on. Stay with us. Maybe one of them lived there. They had a house. Please come in, have dinner with us. And so Jesus, he did. And then as he went in, he sat at the table with them to eat dinner. And he took the bread that they were going to have for dinner, and he blessed it. Oh, God. Thank you for supplying this wonderful food that we have. And then he broke it and he began giving it to each one there. And when he did that, the Bible says their eyes were open. <gasps> it's Jesus. He's the one that we've been talking to all this time. <gasps> He's alive, it's true. Yes, the tomb was empty, but he's alive just like the angels said. And as Jesus was sitting there with them, the Bible tells us that all of a sudden he disappeared. He didn't say, excuse me, and get up and walk out the door. He just, he was gone. He vanished right before their eyes. And so the Bible says that they says, wow, he's alive. What should we do? And they thought we've got to go tell the disciples. We've got to tell them. Now the angel had already told the women, go tell the disciples. And the women had gone to tell the disciples. But do you think the disciples believed the women? You know, you may think, oh yeah, they just really wanted him to come back to life. Oh yes, they would just believe anything. But you know, the Bible tells us that they didn't. They, in fact, were in an upper room. And in that room, they were afraid. The Bible says that they, they had the doors locked, locked those doors because they took Jesus, now they'll be after us. And it says that they were very, very 
frightened. And so those two men that were with Jesus, they said, we've got to go back and tell the disciples. It was seven miles back. It would be another two to three hours of walking. But they said, we must go back. So that they just left immediately within the hour. And they went back. And when they went back, they found the disciples. And yes, they must have knocked on the door. Let us in. It's us. It's us. And they let them in. And they went in there and they said, it's true. What the women were telling you was true. We saw him. We saw him with our own eyes. He's alive. He's not dead. And you know, it says, while they were telling these things, all of a sudden, nobody knocked. Nobody opened the door. Nobody did anything but there in their midst was Guess who? Oh, it was the Lord Jesus himself. He had come to tell his disciples, I told you I was going to come alive and I am. Here I am. But you know, when he stood there, the Bible says they were startled. Oh, they were frightened. And they thought, oh, we're seeing a ghost. We're seeing a spirit. And he said to them, oh, why do you think that? Didn't I tell you? You know what, kids? It's very important that we believe what the Lord tells us. Every single thing he tells us is true. And a lot of people say, oh, yes, but I don't believe that, or I don't believe that. When God says it, it's true. And they found out that it was. And he says, why do you have doubts? Can't you just believe my word? You know what, kids? Faith is believing that which we don't see. But there was evidence that Jesus did all those miracles. When he said, I'm going to come alive, there was evidence they could have known nobody but God himself could do the things he did. And they should have known that if what he did was so powerful and happened, that when he said, I'm going to come back alive again, that he would. And so when they thought that he was just a ghost, he said, no, no, come on, come on, come on, come on closer. T -t -t Touch my hands. See, see right there? Yeah, there's the scar. And, and look at my feet. The scars in my feet, too. You'll see. It's really me. And then he said, uh, well, did you have anything left over from dinner? Do you have anything here to eat? And they had a piece of fish. And they said, here. And so he ate the fish. Because kids, a spirit doesn't eat and you can't touch a spirit. And he says, I have flesh and bone. And, and so the Bible says that, oh, they were so happy and they were just overjoyed. And then he said to them, he says, now I have a job for you. God sent me from heaven to pay the penalty for your sin. And I came down, but now I, am sending you out to tell people the good news. You've seen it. You know. It's these men. They knew Jesus. They had walked and talked with him for three years. When they saw him alive, they knew it was him. And they were honest men. We're going to find out later that it would have been so much easier for them to have said, oh, no, no, he didn't come alive. But they said, no. We know he came alive. And because of that, they were persecuted. They were tortured. Most of them died by saying, I will not deny that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And this all happened because they saw him alive. Because before he came alive, remember they all scattered? They all ran away. They didn't stand up for him. But when they saw him alive, they were so convinced. You know, there was a club of men and they all just were men that we don't believe in God and they would have meetings okay this isn't true because this isn't true and they would just talk amongst themselves how the Bible wasn't true so they assigned this one man and he was very brilliant and they says okay we want you to give a report you go out you study everything you know about the resurrection and you come back and go ahead just tell us why it's not true 
Well, you know what that man did? He went out and studied the resurrection. And of course, you know what happened when he came back? He became a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And instead of writing how it wasn't true, he wrote one of the greatest bestsellers of all time. Do you know that people that haven't studied the Bible, they're the ones will say to you, oh, I don't believe that. But if you've studied the Bible and you've read about it, there's convincing proofs that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. In fact, it is a fact of history that Jesus rose from the dead. Now, that he was the Son of God, that he died for our sins, we learn that in the Bible. But you can't argue with the fact that Jesus lived, he died, and he made himself alive again. That is true. And you know, uh, you may think, oh, well, all his disciples, they were there. But you know, there was one man, one of their disciples. Now, I must tell you that all of a sudden, Jesus, he disappeared again. Do you know, he had a different body than he had when he was here the first time. Now, before he died on the cross and came alive, he would spend all his time with his disciples. He would sleep with them. He would eat with them. They would follow him. He would do miracles. Now it was going to be different. He wasn't spending all his time with them, and he disappeared. And so the Bible tells us that there was one man, one of his apostles, and that was Thomas, and Thomas wasn't there when the Lord appeared. And so the Bible says that Thomas, he said, I don't believe. These were the other apostles. They had followed Jesus. Can you believe that he did not believe his own friends and these men that he knew wouldn't lie? Do you know there are some people today and you can tell them everything and they just say, no, I'm not gonna believe. And they don't even really want to believe. They just, they just wanna argue. And they don't wanna believe in the Lord Jesus. And Thomas, he said, you know what? Unless I touch his hands myself, and unless I touch, put my, my fist in, in his side, the scar where, where the sword went in, unless I touch him and see him, I am not going to believe. Now, you know, kids, I hope you're not that way. Because, but if you do have a question, and many of us do, ask God, ask God people in your, the church, ask your priest, ask your Sunday school teacher, ask the right person. If you have a question, go to the right place to find the answer. Well, the Bible tells us that one week later, they were all in the room again. They still had the doors locked and Thomas was there. And as Thomas was there, who do you think appeared again? <gasps> It was Jesus. And when Jesus appeared again, he went right up to Thomas and he said, Thomas, here's my hands. Here's my side. Feel them. It's me. Do you think Thomas did that? Do you know, the Bible says that Thomas, when he saw the Lord, he didn't feel his hands. He didn't feel his feet. He didn't put his fingers into his, his side. He fell down on his knees and he said, my Lord, you are my Lord. You are my King. Anything you ask me to do, I believe you are my King. And then he says, and he was the first one that used this next phrase. He says, you are my King and my God. Now up until that point, People had said, you're the son of God. You're the son of man. You're the Messiah. You're the promised one. But Thomas was the first one that says, you are God himself. And Thomas believed. You know, kids, I hope you believe because it's the truth. It really happened. And you know, the Bible says it's important for us to believe the truth. And we're going to have a verse that tells us that if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then we're going to live forever with him in heaven. He created us to live with him. That's his 
purpose and plan for us. He wants you to live in heaven with him. I hope you read your Bible and I hope you pray because you will, the Bible says that you grow in faith by reading God's word. Oh, it's so exciting. I love it. And now we're going to have our memory verse. Now, before Jesus died, he had told his disciples exactly what was going to happen to him. He says, I am going to be crucified. And then in three days, I'm going to rise again. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you know what's going to happen to you when you die? Do you know the Bible says that we can know? Now, let me tell you. When I look at you, do you know what I see? I see your body. We all have a body. But the Bible tells us that we are more than just a body. When you talk to me, do you talk to my arm? Well, hello, Mrs. Point. How, how are you today? You don't talk to my arm, do you? Do you talk to my leg? No, you talk to the real me that lives inside my body. And of course, that is called our soul. And our soul is the part of us that thinks, that loves and feels and gets angry. It's the part of us that wants things. I want this. You want that. I want to be such and such when I grow up, when somebody else wants to be something different. That's our soul. Now, you know animals? Animals have a body. We can see their body. Now, animals have a soul, but not to, do, to the degree that we do. It's, it's much lesser. But the Bible says that we have something that animals don't have. Man is different than animals. When God created man, he breathed into man the breath of life, and he became a living being. So we also have a spirit, and that spirit is the part of us that lives forever. It will never die. And so, you know, now some people, they think, oh, you know, when I die, that's it. I just cease to exist. But you know what they're going to find out when they die? They're going to find out that they don't. They're going to find out that when they die, and death means separation. Do you know, when I was your age, I thought death means the end. That's it. It's over. But it's not over at all. When you die, your body is still there, isn't it? It's lying there. And your soul and spirit, though, has separated from your body for the very first time. So in death, there is a separation of your body from your soul and spirit. Now, if you've asked the Lord Jesus Christ to, to be your Savior and you believe in him, the Bible says that you will go to heaven. But the Bible tells us that if you've never had the Holy Spirit living within you, then the Bible says that we are dead. We are dead in our sins. And so if we don't have the Holy Spirit, then the Bible says we're separated not only from our body, but we're also separated from God. God. We're also, and so death means separation. When the Bible says that if you don't believe in the Lord and have the Holy Spirit, that you will die, it means that you'll be forever separated from God in heaven. Now, um, there was a man, and his name was Mr. Jones. And Mr. Jones went out one day to mow the yard. And so when he went out to mow the yard, you know, he was a little bit older, and as he was mowing, let's just put Mr. Jones down a little bit there. There we are. There's Mr. Jones, and he's mowing his yard. But all of a sudden, Mr. Jones, he falls over because he has had a oh, heart attack. And so there's Mr. Jones. But you know what? 
the minute that Mr. Jones falls over, it just so happens that he dies. So the very minute that Mr. Jones falls over, his soul and spirit, which we could not see, are separated from his body. So there's his body lying there. But you know what? I didn't really know Mr. Jones, so I didn't know, but <gasps> look, he has the spirit. So where is Mr. Jones going to go now that he is separated from his body? He is going to go to... That's right. He is going to go to heaven. Oh, and so the very moment that he's separated from his body, oh yes, there's his body lying there, but he is now in heaven. Well, out comes Mrs. Jones. She finds her husband lying there, but is it really her husband that's lying there? No. Nope. It's just his body because Mr. Jones is in heaven with the Lord Jesus. But Mrs. Jones, she does what every good wife will do. She takes that body and she puts Mr. Jones in a box, in a casket, and she buries him right there under the yard because he loved his lawn. And so his body is now there. But he is in heaven. But you know what God says is going to happen someday? He says that someday your, his body, your body too, if you are dead, it is going to come out of that grave and it is going to be reunited with your soul and spirit and then you will live forever in heaven. Now, we don't know what our new bodies are going to look like. But you know what about most people? Most people, there's something about the way they look that they don't like. Is there anything about the way you look that you just wish you were a little bit different? You know what? That's true with everybody. But when you get that new body, oh, it's going to be so wonderful and so glorious. So, you know, even though Mr. Jones was dead... Was he still alive? Yes. yes, he was still alive. So even though he was dead, he was still alive. And do you know what the Bible says about us? That we are still alive. But if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then we will never die. Now let me ask you something. When the Bible says you will never die, does it mean that your body will never die? Nope, nope because your body could die. So when the Bible says, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and have the Holy Spirit within you, then what is it talking about that will never die? Soul. Your soul and your spirit. spirit will never die. And you know why we'll never die? Because the Lord Jesus Christ gives us life. And you know, he says... I am the resurrection and the life. And Jesus died. Now, kids, you take a body that's dead and the blood is not flowing and the heart has stopped. Who can give life to that body again? There is no doctor on this earth. There is no scientist on this earth that can take a dead body. Okay, let's get that heart pumping again. Let's get that blood going. Especially if the body has been dead for three days. But God, he is all powerful. It's nothing for him to get the body going again. And so with his own body, he raised himself from the dead. And he says, I can raise myself and I am going to raise you someday. And so he that believes in me, though he were dead, Mr. Jones, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Someday Mr. Jones is, well, he's still alive, but someday he's going to live in his body. And whosoever lives, that's us, we're still alive now, aren't we? So whosoever lives and believes in me, who's talking here? It's God. Jesus. Whosoever lives and believes in me shall never, never 
die. And of course, uh, what is that part that will never die? It is our soul and spirit, because our body might die. We might be alive when the Lord Jesus comes back. Oh, we all hope for that, but we can know exactly what's going to happen. So I'm going to put one of them here, and I'm going to put the other one right here, so we can say this together. So it goes, now Jesus was dead. So he says, I am, okay, we're going to, we're down in the grave. I am the resurrection and the life. He's alive. All right, let's do that again. I am the resurrection and the life. And then it says, he, anybody, he who believes in me, shall, no, Willie, we're going to go. He that believes in me, though he were dead. This is a deaf sign for dead. You're alive, you're dead. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Even though we do that twice, yet shall he live. And whosoever, that means anyone, let's point to other people again, and whosoever lives and believes in me, shall, and we keep our hands up because we're alive, shall never, never die. Shall never, never die. John 11, 25, and 26. We are going to sing that, and we're also going to do the motions. I hope you're ready. All right, so it goes, remember, we're down in the grave. All right, so let's, we're going to hear the music here any moment. I am the Well, let's just do that again, though. All right. So when it starts out, you know, we've got to be ready because we don't have a musical interlude here. All right. So it goes. Oh, no. He's down in the grave. All right. I am the resurrection and the life. He believes in me, though he were dead. Yet shall he live. We're going to do it one more time, and this time we're just going to really get those words and really get those motions. All right. So we're, we're down in the grave now. So it goes, I am the resurrection. All right. I am the resurrection and the life. You guys did wonderful. I am so glad that you joined us today. Oh, I hope you come back. It is so exciting when we learn about our wonderful Lord Jesus and he came alive. You know that nobody else came alive like he did and he can give us life too. Oh, it is so exciting. Now I want you to read your Bible and pray every day and join us next week. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>